Hey, welcome to my vlog, a day in the life of someone with a chronic illness. Today, uh, we're going to have all kinds of fun. And by fun, I mean try not to be utterly exhausted by the end of the day. I'm mostly going to be doing voiceover today because, well, it's just easier. And look at that, I'm already falling behind. Alright, so I woke up and I was really tired because I didn't fall asleep until 6am the night before, or technically the morning, same morning. Um, so yeah, I'm really tired and I'm putting some pills, I'm taking my pills, my morning pills, I'm taking them. Uh, this is hydrocortisone and I also take valcite, which is an antiviral drug. Uh, so I take those in the morning. Oh, and by the way, by morning, I mean afternoon. It is legitimately after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I wake up at that time because I don't fall asleep until like 5 or 6 usually. Sometimes I wake up at noon, sometimes I wake up at 1, sometimes today I wake up at 3. Okay, moving on. We are brushing our teeth now, and by we, I mean I. Uh, I keep my toothbrush and toothpaste and flossers and all that good stuff by my bed so I don't have to get up uh, and go to the bathroom when I am super tired and I still need to brush my teeth because, you know, oral hygiene is important. Yeah, it's important, especially when you're chronically ill and it's difficult, if not impossible, for you to uh, go to the dentist. And I, honestly, I haven't been to the dentist in a few years now. Last time I had my teeth cleaned, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to have someone come out to the house and do it, um, but I'm not really wanting to do that right now, so I just really keep up on my oral hygiene. I brush twice a day, I use an, a Sonicare toothbrush, and I try to floss at least once a day, and uh, now you can see all the sexy stuff going on with my oral hygiene. Super sexy. I mean, this is probably the sexiest if not one of the sexiest uh parts of my day so yeah enjoy that a lot of this routine is left over from when i was completely bedridden and care my caregivers actually had to do this stuff for me they had to actually manually brush my teeth for me which was um as unpleasant for both of us as it sounds it's basically like going to the dentist while you're stuck in bed it's sort of a nightmare so I'm glad and grateful to be able to do these things for myself now, although it is still a challenge to do it in bed, um, and I do it in bed because it um, saves me a lot of energy and pain. And here's another sexy part of my day. Uh, this is, I guess you would call my skincare routine. Uh, I basically take a uh, piece of sandpaper and I rub it over my face after I have um, sprayed it with some water. Anyway, um, here <laughs> is my breakfast, I guess, lunch, I don't know, egg salad on a bagel, some okra and a bean salad, try to keep it healthy, and now it's gone. I ate it. I ate it all. My mom made that for me, by the way. Super grateful for that. Okay, this jug beside my bed I use to go number one when I'm not feeling well enough to get out of bed. I primarily use this at night. Now I'm going to transfer out of bed and into my scooter and show you how I go to the bathroom when I am feeling well enough to actually get up and go to the bathroom. I used to have a wheelchair, but I switched to a scooter because it uh, maneuvers a lot better than the wheelchair and I find it a lot easier to get in and out of. The scooter is a Pride GoGo -Go Elite Traveler, I think. I forget exactly the model of it, but as you can see here, it maneuvers and turns on a dime. Look at that. Now, as promised, I'm gonna show you what it's like when I actually get up and go to the bathroom. I take the scooter out into the hallway. Sometimes I take the scooter all the way into the bathroom, but this time I'm going to actually stand up. I can't stand for long. I'd probably say about 30 seconds before I start feeling sick and lightheaded. So I have to sit down pretty quickly. When I'm done in the bathroom, then I transfer it back into my scooter. All right, now I am in our um, postcard room. My mom has a postcard business that I help her out with a little bit when I'm feeling up to it. Hanging out with the dogs on the chair in the postcard room. And I'm leaving the postcard room. It's hot today and I haven't really gone outside yet. So I'm going to go outside now 
and I'm going to shave. Uh, I shave like every other day, shave my face, and um, I'm going to do it outside because uh, it's just cooling off now, and that's going to give me a chance to both be outside for a little bit and to get some of my daily routine done. This is the backyard. We put in this concrete wheelchair ramp so that I can get from my room to the backyard fairly easily. And here's my shaver, this like three-headed monster looking thing. Like many things, I used to do this in bed, but now I can basically do it anywhere because I just bring my shaver with me. Uh, I used to use like a manual razor. I've used like other types of electric razors, but ultimately um, I found that this one works best for me. It does take kind of a long time. Sometimes it feels like it takes like 15 to 20 minutes to really get the close enough shave that I want. It's like pretty taxing on me. and does take a lot of energy, but uh, I guess it's just worth it to uh, not have my face itch like hell. And now we're back inside. Uh, I'm going to show you what it's like when I actually bring my scooter into the bathroom with me. We totally remodeled this bathroom two years ago when we moved in. So we actually widened the door so that I could bring my scooter all the way in. And then I transfer to the toilet. When I'm done, I transfer it back. I'll talk about the shower situation later when I take my shower. Okay, now I'm in the car. I forgot to show me transferring into the car, but uh, I'll show when I transfer out of the car, which will give you a, an idea of what it's like. And maybe on another vlog, I'll show you transferring back into the car. Um, so we're going for a little drive, me and my mom and the dogs. There they are. Hey, Pixie is the black one and uh, Squirrel is the tan colored one. Uh, Pixie, I think, is a Greyhound Chihuahua mix. Squirrel is a Chihuahua and some other kind of mix. Not sure. All right, so we are going for a little drive. It is probably about 7-ish, 7.30-ish at night, so the sun is setting. So we're going to catch the sunset. We're going to drive out Highway 37, which, if you've read my book, my memoir, When Force Meets Fate, uh, I was in a really bad, tragic car accident on this highway and we're coming up to this bridge which is called the napa river bridge which is where the accident took place um when we moved to vallejo i was like wow i am moving very close to the scene of this really traumatic accident event in my life but um in the two years since then since we moved there i have really um overcome my uh fear i guess and my trepidation with driving on this highway and driving over this bridge particularly and it feels really good to sort of reclaim it because as you can see it is a very beautiful i mean gorgeous area and it just feels good to be able to enjoy that again without really having to like dwell or be traumatized and of course it helps to have a little comfort dog with you as well i still think about it whenever we drive past the scene but then just like life in general you just kind of move on so that's what we're doing right now one last thing i'll say about this is when i wrote the book i hadn't crossed the bridge again since the accident uh, so in the book i was sort of envisioning what it would be like to get to that point and cross the bridge and for a long time i was too sick and too far away to be able to do that but now here we are we're crossing the bridge this is basically where the accident took place and it just feels really good to be able to do that and to sort of fulfill uh, that image that vision that i had created and by the way, this is probably like the 100th or 200th time that I've crossed this bridge since then. Uh, it took me a while to be able to do it the first time. And I think the first time was maybe about a year ago. So in that year since, I've crossed the bridge a lot. And now I'm able to enjoy these beautiful sunsets. All right, moving on to other things. For a long time, I've driven on this road and I've seen this outhouse without a door and there's this toilet in the outhouse. You can see it from the road. And I would always uh, go by there and I would wonder, 
is that a toilet? Like, what is that? And then a couple of weeks ago, I found this video on Instagram of this guy, and he went out there, and he, like, investigated it, and he did a bunch of research, and he found that it's actually used to be a town there, and that's, like, the last remaining structure of that town. It's, like, a little island, and there used to be a town there, and now there's just this random porta potty and this random toilet, no idea if it works, just sitting in the middle of a marsh. We're coming up on the um, Sears Point Sonoma Raceway, which is a nice place to turn around. They do a bunch of like uh, drag car racing and HRA stuff up there. I think maybe some Formula One stuff. So it's a really nice spot if you ever want to take a drive. And now we're going to head home. But look at this gorgeous sky, this blue and pink cotton candy sky. It's just gorgeous. We're basically going to just turn around and go back on highway 37 the exact way that we came out here so this is heading in the eastbound i think eastbound direction back towards vallejo on highway th 37 you can see mount diablo off in the distance we're actually coming up on mare island which is one of my favorite spots in the area as well this is a high school football and baseball field on mare island right here and we're coming up on a blue, a light blue bridge that you can pretty much see from anywhere in Vallejo. And we're going to cross the bridge over onto the mainland, I guess. That's what you call it. And then we're going to head home. Oh, and just for context, if you look to the left, you can see the Napa River Bridge, which is what we crossed on our way out to Sears Point. If you look to the right, you can see down the Napa River, uh, down to Crockett and South Vallejo. Here is the light blue bridge and those giant towers. Uh, you can also see the marina, the Vallejo Marina. And we're going to drive along the waterfront. Uh, and you can kind of get a better idea of what Mare Island looks like as we drive along the waterfront. Uh, it was a naval base up until the 90s, so you can see a lot of like dry docks and stuff where the uh, Navy used to work on ships. So this is the waterfront. Uh, in on Vallejo and this is the ferry building where the ferry goes to San Francisco and comes back a lot of people take it to see Giants games and stuff like that and now we're going to drive through downtown there's a nice mural some really nice old uh, buildings and shops uh, it's a nice it's a nice area I think Vallejo gets a bad rap but it really does have a lot of character and some really nice old architecture you can see these old like Victorian houses up on the hill coming up uh, this is a really nice cool neighborhood to drive through and now we're back home this is the front of the house squirrel and i are just waiting for my mom and pixie to grab my scooter bring it back i am going to transfer from the car into the scooter which can be cumbersome if not quite painful so i will let the audio speak for itself I will try to show some better angles of that in future videos so you get a better idea of exactly what it's like. I am heading back into the house. This is the front gate. Uh, there's a ramp, uh, the sliding glass door. I'm going to go up. It's a little steep, hard to get up sometimes, but I manage. And we're going to go through the kitchen to the left down the hall. And go into my room and I'm gonna grab my towel so I can take a shower and that will give me a chance to show you exactly what the shower process is like we completely remodeled the bathroom two years ago took out the tub and put in a slope floor shower so that I can drive my scooter all the way up to the bench once we get into the bathroom uh, I'm going to drive my scooter all the way up to this bench and then I am going to transfer from my scooter to the bench, pushing that footstool out of the way, which I will use in a second to keep my feet elevated. There we go. Transfer it onto the bench. Now I have to back the scooter out of the shower so it doesn't get wet and isn't in my way. Once it's out of the way, and then I put my feet up onto the footstool and I do this because I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or orthostatic intolerance basically I get sick and I just feel like crap if my feet are not elevated especially for a long period of time 
All right, so I got the wand, and I am going to turn the shower on. And then, just like that, I am done. Look at that. The fun part is uh, toweling off and transferring from the bench back to my scooter without slipping on the wet floor. It's sort of like ice skating, but in a very small area. First, I have to bring the scooter back into the shower without running it directly into my knees. Once it's in place, then I grab my glasses so that I don't break them. And then I'm going to carefully put my hands onto the handlebars and stand up. Then I'm going to sit down without slipping. Sometimes when I'm not feeling well enough, I will bring the scooter closer and just transfer directly from the bench to my seat. But today I am standing up and then sitting down. And then I'm ready to go. We are backing out of the bathroom and into the hallway. And then we're going to go into my room. And I am going to pull up to a scale that I have on the floor. And I'm going to weigh myself. I recently lost uh, about 30 pounds. I was um, over 210, I think. Or around 210. And now I'm like 170. Uh, it was just getting to a point where, like, that extra weight was making it painful and difficult on my muscles and joints. So I just felt like I had to lose some weight to be able to move around easier. Um, but that's a whole other topic for another video. Uh, so then I just grabbed some clothes, and now I'm going to bring my scooter over to the charger and charge it up so it's good to go for tomorrow. I'm going to next transfer back into bed, which is a little bit difficult because the bed is a little higher than my scooter seat. So I have to use my arms and the mattress for leverage. Uh, but then once I'm back into bed, I'm able to catch my breath and then I'm going to get dressed. Watching this really makes me realize how far I've come. When I was at my sickest in like 2015, I it was so difficult for me to put clothes on that I actually just didn't wear clothes. I wore boxers, but I didn't wear like shirts and shorts and socks and all that stuff just because I didn't have the energy and I was just too sick to do that stuff for myself. But now I can do that stuff. Sometimes I need a little bit of help. But overall, I'm a lot more autonomous than I used to be when I was at my sickest. And now I get to lay back and relax for a little bit. Oh, looks like I forgot something. Gotta put on deodorant. I am having some dinner here, some asparagus, some flatbread, and salmon. And I'm going to take my Valsite, my second one today. Also, I got a floss. Uh, I won't show you brushing my teeth because you already saw that earlier. But I got a floss. Got to floss at least once a day. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you liked this, you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do some more videos just like this.